The Sound of Pouring Water Matthew 27 from verse 15 to 26 Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah, he said. Crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. And then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Listen to the sound of water falling into the basin. One of Pilate's servants would have come out at his bidding with a bowl and a ewer of water. And as he poured the water into the bowl, Pilate would have rinsed his hands in the cascading stream. Water falling into a basin is a very homely sound, isn't it? You heard it this morning as you filled the basin before washing your face and later putting away your toothbrush. Later as you prepared your cup of tea and washed up after breakfast. You would be surprised at the number if you counted every time you ran water during the course of the day. Water is so much a part of our everyday lives. It's in these three most common uses. It hydrates us, it cools and refreshes us, and it cleans us. Pilate was trying to use it in the last of these senses. For him, it was a ritual act to convince the crowd, and I suspect to convince himself too, that he was washing himself clean of all guilt. He wanted to make it quite clear that he wasn't to blame for the death of Jesus. It was all due to forces outside his control and everyone there would have immediately understood what Pilate was trying to do. It's interesting that while Judas was overwhelmed by his guilt, that Pilate seemingly understood so superficially that he thought the outward sign of washing his hands was all that was necessary to cleanse him from guilt and its implications. In your mind, hold on to that sound of pouring water. Go back to the early part of the evening, to the gospel which we heard last night, Maundy Thursday. There's that sound again. Can you hear it? John tells us that at supper, with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus had assumed the role of a servant. He had poured water into a bowl and he had washed the disciples' feet. Very important when you wore only sandals on the dusty roads, very dirty when you consider that the streets were also the sewers. At the time of Jesus' washing feet, this was a job fit, on, fit only for the lowest of slaves. Yet Jesus, the master, washed the filthy feet of his disciples. You couldn't get anything more different from Pilate's haughty remorse act. For Jesus, it was a sign of involvement and service. And yet the symbolism intended by Jesus is the same as what Pilate sought, cleansing. But the pouring of water on its own isn't enough. It demands a response, a commitment from those who are washed. Peter's feet were washed but the sound of the cock crow reminded him that he had not been as committed as he thought. Judas's feet had been washed, but the sound of the tumbling silver coins tell of his lack of commitment too.
Pilate sought innocence as he washed his hands. But as he was the only one who had real power in Jerusalem, he was as guilty as anyone involved in the conspiracy. It was only in his fond imaginings that he imagined he had no involvement. And what about us? Many of us won't remember it, but run the story of our lives backwards, almost to the very beginning. There, can you hear it? That's the sound of pouring water again. It's the moment that you were baptized. Water was poured over you partly as a sign of cleansing and partly as a sign of commitment to follow Christ and to fight against evil. You were brought to baptism or came as a matter of your own decision in faith that you might continue as a follower of Jesus, who is described in John's Gospel as offering living water, the one whose teaching can be for us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. We may well have committed ourselves to follow Christ, but isn't there the denier, the betrayer, and the same sham innocent in each one of us as well? We all have an element of Peter, of Judas and of Pilate in our makeup. The amazing thing is that we, like Peter, are forgiven and restored if we open ourselves to that cleansing stream. In the quiet, let us be honest with God and with ourselves, admitting our failures, admitting our manifold sins and weaknesses, and seeking God's forgiveness. Let us resist the temptation to whitewash ourselves like Peter or like Pilate rather, rather like Peter, let's go for deep down cleanliness. Lord, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Knowing that we have been genuinely cleansed, let us rehydrate by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us drink deep of the water of life offered to us in Jesus Christ, and may he refresh our zeal to love and to serve him. Yes, both God and our neighbors. Let us pray. God, our Father, your gift of water brings life and freshness to the earth. It washes away our sins and it brings eternal life. Bless and hallow our use of water. Renew the living spring of water within us and protect us who have been washed in the water of baptism, that we may serve you in cleanness of body, mind and spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.